How's it going everybody? This is Dr. Dune from Greeley Dental Care. Uh, today we're going to talk about medications and things that you need to prepare for uh, from a pharmaceutical perspective for your oral sedation or your IV sedation procedure. So we've already done the consultation. I'm just going to do a quick review of some things, uh, but at the end of the day you don't have to remember all of that, right? This is what we're here for. Call the office, ask for Dr. Brisky, myself, any of the team members. We do this every single day. Uh, they're going to have the answer for you. So first we're going to start off with uh, Valium. So Valium is there for the night before. It's, help, it's there to help you get a good night's rest. What we've noticed over the years, I've been doing sedations for close to a decade now, is if you don't get a good night's rest, you're going to come into the procedure and you're going to be a little amped up. Anxiety overrides sedation. So the Valium is there to help you get a good night's rest. Now the only time you don't want to take it is if there's any blood thinners that you're on. So if you're on any blood thinners, let us know. Uh, we'll go into all the pharmacology on that. You know, we'll nerd out for you. Uh, but the big one is, is you're going to uh, take it about an hour after you're done with dinner and then plan on winding down for the rest of the night. You know, within half an hour or so, you're going to feel the effects. Have someone else set the alarm for you because you might sleep through it. And this stuff stays in your system. So the next morning, the actual sedative, which I'm going to get to in just a minute, is going to interact with it synergistically to get you a good sedation response as well. Uh, just remember, night before, no caffeine, right? Uh, caffeine's a stimulant. Uh, no Coca-Cola, none of that stuff. No cigarettes. Cigarettes are a stimulant as well. We don't want any of that stuff in your system. So Valium is for the night before. Typically, we're going to do 5 or 10 milligrams. And then anything I put a star here on is going to be night before or day before use. So Halcyon is the actual sedative we're going to use in oral sedation. If we do IV sedation, completely different conversation we're going to have. But oral sedation, Halcyon, this stuff, it's 50% of it is out of your system in two hours. That's why it works well for dentistry because it's going to turn over and get out of your system very quickly. Uh, this stuff is very, very safe drug. So the Halcyon is in the same family as the Valium. You're going to take this either 90 minutes before, 60 minutes before, or we're going to give it to you in the office and Dr. Brisky or myself will make that determination. Hydroxyzine and Benadryl, they're in the same family, they're antihistamines. So uh, what that means is if you're going to have like a mild allergic reaction to anything, this is going to help with it. Uh, some of you also know if you take a Benadryl, it's going to make you drowsy. So it's our way of getting you more sedated and more drowsy without having to push your body on sedatives. So everything from here on up is for the sedation. So the next medication here is Decadron. Decadron is a steroid. Uh, the steroid is gonna help with any swelling. So we find that when we use the steroid, uh, that there's significantly less pain, significantly less swelling. People tend to like us better. So the only reason why you wouldn't take the steroid is if you're uh, on osteoporosis medications, if you have narrow angle glaucoma, or if you're at a risk of stomach ulcerations. You would already know this. Your physician would be very clear with you not to take the steroid. Uh, but at the end of the day, ask us about these things. The steroids are very safe. There's not a lot of negatives to this steroid regimen. It's not like you're on prednisone for three months or six months and you hear all the negative effects of steroid use. This is a five-day course. It's very short-acting. It's there for what we need it for. It's going to really help uh, move the needle for you to heal a little bit more appropriately. Ibuprofen. It's a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. So what that means is there's two pathways of pain. Tylenol and Norco and narcotics work on the central nervous system. Ibuprofen works on the peripheral nervous system. So there's actually two pathways. So by taking ibuprofen, A is an anti-inflammatory just like your Decadron is. Uh, B is for pain. So it's a really good one for, um, for dentistry. The only time you're not gonna take ibuprofen is if there's a high risk of stomach ulcerations or if you have kidney issues. So you're gonna to talk to your physicians about that. Obviously, if you've had kidney transplants, all that, let us know. We'll talk about you know, when to use ibuprofen, when not to use ibuprofen. So Norco, hydrocodone, this is a narcotic. The DEA over the past couple of years with the epidemic has changed how we can prescribe narcotics. This is the only one you're gonna need a handwritten prescription. It's the only one you're gonna still have to go to the pharmacy and hand them the script. So make sure you have that filled ahead of time. Also bring that into your appointment. If this is a longer sedation, I'd like to give some to you during the sedation so it's already in your system when you start waking up so that way you're not going to feel you know, soreness afterwards. You're just in a really good place. So Norco, it's metabolized by the liver. 
It's also working on the central nervous system. Uh, and with the Norco right over here, there's already Tylenol in it. So if you're taking Norco, don't take Tylenol. Uh, but this is narcotic, keep it in a safe place. If you have young kids, you have animals, whatever the case may be, just keep it up somewhere high uh, because if they get into it, you know, their bo little bodies are gonna react to it poorly. Amoxicillin, clindamycin, and Keflex, three different antibiotics. So if we're doing bone grafting, implants, surgical, surgical procedures, we're gonna want some antibiotics on board beforehand, okay? So all of these, you're gonna start 24 hours in advance up to 48 hours in advance, depending on your situation. Be very you know, intentional with how we tell you to take this stuff. If you have a penicillin allergy, no amoxicillin. If you have a penicillin allergy that makes you stop breathing, no Keflex. Clindamycin is a good antibiotic for dentistry. The only negative with clindamycin is, is that it can mess up your stomach, right? So if there's any diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, you're gonna stop it taking it right away. It's about one out of 100 people who have it, but when that does happen, it's actually pretty significant. That's why we steer away from clindamycin when we start with amoxicillin or Keflex if we can. So all of this we just talked about is a lot of oral sedation stuff. There's also something called Paradex, that's a mouth rinse, it's a chlorhexidine mouth rinse, small other prescriptions that we might give you. These are the main ones we're gonna be talking about. These are the main ones we get questions on. Uh, but depending on your specific situation, uh, we're going to cater a different type of cocktail, a different type of medication uh, protocol for you. Now, IV sedation. IV sedation means we put in an IV, we're directly giving you the medication, you're uh, definitely 100% asleep, the anesthesiologist is coming into the practice, and he's monitoring your sedation. If you're healthy, we're just going to do our quick check with you. We're going to schedule the anesthesiologist. You guys are going to meet the day of the procedure, so don't worry if they don't call you. Now, if you have some complexities to, to your medical history, if there's anything we need to be concerned with, we're gonna contact your physicians. We're gonna contact any specialists that you're, uh, you're, you're working with. The anesthesiologist is gonna make the decision whether or not they wanna talk to them or if they wanna talk to you directly. So if they have to speak to you on that matter, we'll let you know or they'll call you or one of their team members will call you. But typically what happens with the IV sedation is you show up to the practice, we do this every single day, they're already gonna be there, uh, they'll get you hooked up on the IVs. You're gonna go to sleep. It's gonna feel like five seconds. We'll wake you up. All the work will be done. And uh, through the IV, we're actually gonna give you some of these medications here, uh, but also we're gonna prescribe some of these medications here to you that you'll start taking at home. So a lot of the stuff I reviewed here for home use, you're still gonna use at home after an IV sedation, but we're gonna cater that protocol appropriately as well. So a lot we covered over here. The best thing to do if you have a question is call us or text us. So that way, before you ever take a medication, have your questions answered. So give us a call if you need anything and uh, we're always here to get you to where you need to be.